Matt there. I'm Lucy Gray, and uh, I think we're ready to rock and roll. Thank you for starting the recording, Steve. Um, I'm really excited to be with you today and to share some of what I've learned about uh, social media and how it can impact your professional development. Um, Steve, are you going to moderate for me today? I'm really, um, I can be quiet for a few minutes. No, you're great. Keep going. So I'm Lucy Gray, and I'll just keep going because I've got a lot of information to um, share with you. And if, hopefully you're in the right session. Um, we're talking about social media today, professional development. We want to first thank our sponsors, Follett Software Company, Moneybell, Blackboard Collaborate, Taking It Global Ed, uh, edweb.net, edutopia, and Intel. So thanks to those companies for supporting um, this great week of activities, and uh, I'm thrilled to be here. So um, with every Steve Hargadon run uh, event, we have the, the famous map where everybody gets to indicate where you are in the world. And this helps us kind of get oriented and familiar with each other. If you click on the little star tool to the left of the whiteboard, and then where you are on the map, we can kind of get a sense of where we're coming from today. You can also type in the chat uh, your location, and I'm in uh, Northbrook, Illinois, uh, which is just outside of Chicago. And uh, yes, we have. I where I'm not sure where that person's from. Where the see, we have Alberta, we have Australia. Yay! In the corn desert, Sherry, <laughs> is it that bad down there? Chicago, yay! Joe T. Serbia, okay, and I am, uh, by the way, I am, uh, a, uh, my grandfather was a Serb born in Croatia. So, uh, hello to you from Serbia. Okay, and we have lots of, lots of people that I know, um, that I've met and face to face. Um, so I'm really excited to see old friends and new today. Um, and hopefully I'll be following you on social media soon. The title of my keynote today is Social Media Tools for Personalized Professional Development. Um, and anybody who's known me for any length of time will know that uh, my professional life has really changed um, because I've engaged in these tools. And it really started uh, with my involvement in the Apple Distinguished Educator Program. Uh, it's an award that's given to teachers every two years. I think a new class will probably be announced in the U.S. early next year, I'm guessing. Um, and I became one of these people in 2005 and uh, was immediately relieved to be in a group of like-minded people, and actually people who knew a lot more than I did about technology and education. And one ADE, his name is Mark, and I cannot pronounce his last name, he's from Oklahoma, and uh, he's a weather guy at University of Oklahoma, I believe, uh, introduced me to the joys of RSS, which is kind of geeky and kind of techy. Uh, but really um, helped me leverage uh, blogs and news feeds from all over and really kind of started this journey for me. And it's, it's you know, I'm not anything special. Um, I'm, I, was, I was a regular teacher, and this stuff really empowered me, and I really think that every teacher, A, needs to belong to a community, uh, maybe not necessarily uh, you know, one that's an award-based one, but everybody needs to find their niche and their, their home on the Internet and needs to be able to find a couple tools, at least, that make their work a lot easier. So that's where I'm coming from today. And all of the um, slides that I, and everything I'm going to talk about is downloadable at my website. And it's www.lucygray.org. That's gray with an A. And you do need the www in there. Um, or else you won't get to the right page. And there you'll see um, a slide share embed of my slides, which you can browse through. Or right below it is a link where you can download these slides in PDF form. And when you open them up as a PDF, um, you should be able to click on, on the various links I'm going to show, and it will take you right to the resource I'm going to talk about. Um, so you might want to write this down. It, uh, I'll come back to it later. But everything that we're going to talk about uh, is, is there. 
Um, I've done this presentation a couple times before, and I always jazz up and add new and different things uh, to it. So today's presentation will be a little bit different than ones I've done in the past. Um, driving all of this for me has been something that I call professional generosity. And Steve has heard me talk about this quite a bit. Um, and, and, and what this means is I, I think that we have an obligation as teachers, particularly in this day and age, to inspire and support each other. And I'm not in the classroom anymore. I'm a consultant uh, working with a variety of groups and people. Um, but I really believe it, that this, if you do this, great things will come back to you. Uh, and we owe it to each other to support each other, it, especially since we're, it's kind of a beleaguered time in education. And I believe that all teachers, or most teachers have good intentions and are, are really trying to do their jobs as best they can, um, and given some very challenging conditions. I don't really believe in the myth of the bad teacher as much. And I think it's up to us to kind of um, raise ourselves up and show people, show the world what we're doing with technology and connecting. Uh, this also goes back to Karen Cater, if you've had the chance to hear her this week, uh, or during Connected Educators Month. Uh, she's, she's talked about the idea of the highly connected teacher, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but a couple years ago, I, I had an interaction with a colleague where they were doing something phenomenal with technology, and I, um, and I said, you should blog about it. And, and this person, um, and this is when I had just started blogging and, and felt that it was a very great reflective practice and a, a way of kind of connecting with others. And this person didn't agree with me and, and said, well, that might be your thing, Lucy, but it's not mine. And I understand that because I don't think people are necessarily comfortable with putting their stuff out there. But again, this goes back to uh, we have this obligation to each other and it really benefits other people. And I feel that to, you know, everybody's going to do this to certain degrees, but I think it's really important that we do this. So that's what kind of drives everything. So Karen Cater has talked in her uh, presentations for the last couple of years as she's worked for the Department of Education about the idea of a highly connected educator or teacher. And that's somebody who's connected to data, connected to resources, and connected to each other. And I think that, uh, you know, I live in a world where uh, many of my friends are, who are in this room, we are connected to each other, and we have been connected for, it seems like, a long time. So we think everybody, all the teachers out there, are connected in this way. But in reality, I don't think that's the case. I asked Karen um, last year when she visited Illinois for our Illinois uh, Computing Educators Conference how many teachers she really thought fit that bill, and she said about 25%. I also asked, um, I need to turn off my phone here. I also asked, uh, I, I was also very curious too to this year's uh, Project Tomorrow Speak Up Day results, which said that I think 8% of all teachers were on Twitter. And that shocked me because I think, you know, you know, I know like a thousands of teachers on Twitter and that can't be just 8% of the teaching force, right? So if that's the case, if these numbers are really that low, there's, we've got a ways to go to show our colleagues the joys of this. And so I hope during this month, everybody's had an opportunity to find something that they can uh, help, will help them get connected, will help them get connected. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is a video, and we'll see how this goes. This is a video that's a couple years old by our friend Will Richardson, uh, and he talks about what a PLN is. And if you're not familiar with this concept, it's a personal learning network or a professional learning network. And he very eloquently, much more eloquently than I could do myself, talks about what this means. So we're going to listen to this and hopefully it will come through for you. If it doesn't, uh, we'll move on. But this is a really great video where he explains why this is so vital. So I'm going to show you the video. You should be able to see it in a second. Do, 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 do. Come on, technology, work for me. Oops, that's the, oops, that's the Blackboard. I gave you the wrong link. Hang on. I will get it again. That's the Blackboard Collaborate link. <laughs> you don't want to go there. This is where we want to go. Come on, come on. There we go. Personal learning networks are going to be a really important environment. The first time in the moment, the last few days, there are moments where I'm sitting in the And so this 
change here. Things I want to add here, I don't want to share, I want to go back to my slides, uh, is, and this is kind of an aside, uh, we were just talking in the chat about how we think it's important that schools have their own social networks so kids have kind of a walled garden to play in. And I don't think this is a rocket science uh, for some reason. I think, I, I wish more schools were doing this. Um, but my favorite school, which I've been talking about since about the time this video was made, is a school at Columbia University. Uh, it's a private school, K-8, one-to-one laptop school in New York City. And their technology director, uh, Don Buckley, is very innovative and has facilitated a social network within the school for the kids to use. And uh, they, they, they use it, they built it using a platform called ELG. And it's an open source software. And the kids are guided through every year the process of uh, developing their profile, developing their avatar, uh, in, in the context of talking about who they are and what they stand for and what their identity is. And it's archived every year. So the kids don't just do it once, they do it continually and can refine it and reinvent themselves from year to year. Um, and, you know, related to this, they also have their own photo sharing space and video sharing space and they leverage Google Sites extensively for, for book reviews and things like that. And it, it, just, it doesn't take a lot of technology, it takes a lot of thought. And so I'd like to see us get to that point where we're, we're modeling that for our kids. And so when I think of Will's video, I think of the School of Columbia and how important that is. So I think I'm preaching to the choir here, but just as a quick review, you know, in case you're not sure what social media is, it's basically these tools that you hear about a lot, like YouTube, that allow for interactivity and participation. And they often have what I referred to earlier as an RSS feed. Uh, for instance, I can keep track of my friend's photo uploads in Flickr by subscribing to the feed from their Flickr account. And I use that, uh, I do that using a tool called Google Reader. There are other ones that you can use. 
and and basically what this means is you can get information to come to you as opposed to going out and looking for new content and new information all the time. And this is a really, really important concept to get your mind wrapped around in this day and age because it's not about memorizing content. It's about how you leverage it and how you bring it to yourself or to others efficiently. And so uh, that's kind of where we are with all this right now. I know it's a little techy, but look up RSS. It stands for Real Simple Syndication. And um, it's really kind of the, the background technology that drives a lot of these tools. So people will say that I'm, uh, uh, I guess, connected um, because I know I seem to know a lot of people and I'm all over in social media. And I, I don't know if they say that with an admiration or like uh, wariness, uh, but I, these tools have helped me connect to a lot of different people. And I have dived in and, and played with lots of them. However, uh, these are kind of the ones, these are the kind of buckets that I think are important for teachers to think about in terms of proving that these tools are useful. Um, there's photos, there's audio, there's videos, there's, there are bookmarks, there's general information, there's networking, all these things we have to kind of manage in our professional lives to some degree. And the first layer of tools here are ones that are kind of basic that in, in my world most teachers know about, I think. They've been around for a while, they're kind of established, uh, they're, they're kind of a baseline level of tools in these buckets. The second layer are ones that maybe not every teacher knows about, but a lot of people do, uh, and are, are kind of taking the next step. Uh, and then the third layer and the fourth layer are things that are probably not as widely used, but are getting there. Um, and, and those are probably ones that if you're, if you're into the, if you've already kind of mastered the basic ones, you might take a look at these. Um, are there any ones here, out of all of these, here's a question for you in the chat, what is your favorite one that you've tried, if you've tried any, and, uh, and then I'm going to ask you another question. So in the chat, can you quickly tell me, out of all of these, which, ones, which one do you love the most or have tried? It's hard to pick a favorite, I know. You can pick a couple, that's okay. I love Paperly. I should have brought that in here. It's awesome. I've been using Paperly like crazy. All of them? We have a lot of Digo users here, I see. Ooh, Backpack TV. We're going to have to try that. Blogger. So these are, it's kind of overwhelming. If you're brand new to all of this, yeah, Edmode is not listed. I should add that. I should add that under networking. Definitely. And I know there's some plurkers out there. Yeah. So it's really hard to pick a, a, a core set. There are a lot of them out there. Uh, you'll find lots of lists that will list, you know, 3 million, you know, Web 2.0 tools for professional development. Well, you know, I think finding our own, our few that work for you is kind of the strategy to do that. And I'll talk about the ones that I use the most in a minute. If you download these slides by any, by chance, um, you can click on them and go right to the tool, by the way, okay? So what is the point of all this? You know, I know lots of people who think Twitter is ridiculous and, and why would anybody want to know if I'm in Starbucks having a latte, if I tweet that? Um, but it, it's a lot more than you might think if you're new to this. And I think there should be a movement in the United States around teachers taking control of their own professional development and modeling learning for their colleagues and for their students. I think fundamentally that's what I think is really important. We're so used to having professional development done to us in a way that may not be relevant to us, and social media can really kind of bring that home for you in a much, much different way. Um, you can investigate best practices anywhere, anytime, uh, you have access to experts and people that you may not necessarily have in your corner of the world. Um, and as Will said, we need to kind of figure this out because our kids are doing this. And if we, we're not going to be able to keep up with them necessarily, right? But at least we have an understanding of what they're doing and we'll not look at them as, as this being, as being freakish, I guess. So the other thing that we also have to keep in mind is, again, that in, we're in the age of information. Um, overload, we need to see ourselves as curators and creators of content for our students. We need to scaffold 
that kind of content and those experiences with that content for our kids. And so this is why we should delve into social media. Okay, so what's your Web 2.0 story? I would love to see everybody who's, who's comfortable with this um, come in, to write, a, write a blog post for Connected Educators Month about what your Web 2.0 story is. And I, it, it may seem kind of, you know, when, I, when I've done mine, I have a bulleted list I'm going to show you, it seems kind of self-serving and whatever, but there's a point to it. And I'll tell you what that is in a minute. Um, you know, all of this stuff started for me in, before 2000, and I started going to my state technology conferences and these awesome Classroom Connect conferences. We used to have a great magazine, too. Um, I started a master's degree in technology and ed. I started subscribing to listservs like crazy. I don't know if anybody here was ever um, was ever part of the EdTech listserv um, in uh, from Michigan State. I love that. Uh, I went to my first NEC conference, which Steve Jobs keynoted, and I missed. Uh, and then things really uh, went crazy for me. Um, when I became an Apple Distinguished Educator and had the opportunity to meet other like-minded people. Um, and so that's when I really became part of a core group of, of educators that, that took my uh, professional development to another level. Um, I, and that's when I first heard Ellen November, and he talked about things I'd never heard of, like blogging and Skype and Technorati. And, uh, and so things really started to change and kind of accelerate. And I'm having an issue here with my audio settings. And I can't move the slides. Can you guys hear me? What's going on? Ooh. I don't see anybody moving. You can hear me. OK, maybe it's catching up. I can't move my slides because I'm getting this audio system warning. Steve? Steve? Save me. OK, it's choppy. Ah, okay. I guess I went too far. Somebody changed it for me. I need slide 11. Peggy, can you move to slide 11, the one before that? Thank you. Oh, I, thank you. Peggy saves the day one more time. Okay, so as you can see here, I'm not going to bore you with these details, but, but things change for me pretty rapidly. And I had some, I've had some amazing opportunities because I started leveraging and reaching out and connecting to people and learning from other people. So my, my point, if you go to slide 12, Peggy, is that your path is going to look completely different. And you may be younger than I am and just starting out with this. You may have been in this business for a long time and may have more experiences than I do. But it, your path shouldn't look like mine. And your aha moment when some of this stuff uh, really took hold for you is going to be completely different. So, for instance, I started blogging, I don't know, 2005, 2006, and I wrote about this wonderful park in Chicago that had just been built by my house. And it was this melting pot of a, of a neighborhood, and, and it just was lovely. And I wrote about it, and I blogged about it, really just to kind of be reflective. I don't think anybody would ever read it, um, or that anybody could find it, really. And much to my surprise, I received an email from the landscape firm that had donated their services for this. And um, and they had read my blog post and they wanted to put it into their newsletter to to show what people thought of their work. So you never know when you're going to have the aha moment where you realize, oh my gosh, I am connected to people, and uh, and my voice can be heard. So um, so please, you know, keep that in mind as you're going forward. There's a little picture down here at the bottom, which is a tweet. Um, from uh, Autumn Laidler in Chicago, who is a, a Chicago public school teacher. And uh, she, I just saw her in the last couple of years really blossom. I, I worked with her uh, at a project at the University of Chicago. And I don't know exactly, I can't remember exactly how she got involved with social media, but she started using Twitter. And, and then I would see her all the time. And it was great. She was reaching out and connecting to people. And, and for her, using the Ed Chat. Uh, tag fourth chat for fourth grade teachers at the time was really empowering. And so she found people, you know, she was probably in a, in a pretty 
the first school that she, I knew her at was a, was a pretty tough situation. And when you're alone in your classroom and, and you need some support, this social media can really uh, bring it home for you. Okay? So let's go on to the next slide and keep going because I want to talk about some of these cool tools and some of these fun projects. But I'm having such an issue with the audio, I can't get rid of this audio system warning for some reason. And I don't know if I'll be able to show you anything. We'll, we'll see. Um, it keeps jumping into the middle of my screen. So, uh, and I never have a problem with Blackboard Collaborate. Anyway, um, here's, here's, here are the tools that I use the most. Out of that chart that I showed you at the beginning, these are the ones that I think are the most fundamental for me. And again, they may be different for you. But the ones, you know, people kind of uh, get, I think, a little nervous about how many tools are out there and that we're getting too, too, too tool crazy. And, uh, and it's too hard to keep up with it. And, and my viewpoint is, yeah, it's fun to dabble with some new stuff that's out there. Uh, but you know what? My, my basic tool set really hasn't changed that much in the last couple of years. It evolves uh, for sure. Um, but definitely, I, I kind of stuck to the tried and true. So this is what I use the most. And I'm going to whittle this down a little bit further and show you five things that I think are really kind of essential, and hopefully you'll take one of them and run with it if you're not doing so already. So we'll go to the next slide, 14. So the five things I'd like you to think about are microblogging with Twitter, um, uh, networking and community building with social networks, particularly now with Google Plus and Facebook, reading blogs, uh, and, and then utilizing a newsreader to help you find those. Um, that information and discovering images and groups in Flickr, which is probably the least utilized aspect um, here, and then finding and sharing resources via social bookmarking. These are kind of the five things that I think educators should be able to do at some point. So let's go on and we'll talk about some of these. The next one is Twitter. Um, oh, serendipity. So the, the glue for all of this is serendipity. You find stuff in social media because you stumble upon it. There are social aspects to YouTube, to, um, to delicious and social bookmarking. You find, if you follow people, you'll see what they're doing, you'll see what they're bookmarking, you'll see what they're accessing, and you'll have kind of another vetted set of resources in, for your classroom. So serendipity happens a lot with social media, and it's kind of fun to see how that is. And for it, it just happens when you something that hits you connect with somebody in an interesting way. It, you know, uh, be prepared for it if you die to the Lucy, your audio is going in and out. We started losing you about a minute ago. So those of you who are attending can't see it, but as a moderator, we can see that she's had a bandwidth slowdown. Hopefully, it will catch up. And let's see if she comes on. She may have to log out and log back in again. So she dropped off. I'm assuming her bandwidth slowed down, and that would mean she would come right back on. But if it was a computer issue and she had to reboot, then it could take a minute, but let's wait and see what happens. Hopefully her internet didn't go down completely. Thanks for picking up the slack, John. So the poll is how many here use Twitter? 
And I'm going to change this to yes, no poll up at the top. Oh, it is yes, no now. So I'm thinking you must have done that. So if you're using Twitter, you would click on the check mark underneath your name in the participant window and click yes. If you're not using Twitter, you could click no. And it looks like Lucy is back. Give her moderator privileges. Welcome back, Lucy. Can you hear me now? Can you, is this better? Yes. Much better. Sorry, guys. So it'll take a, I've never had this problem before. Thank yeah, it you. It sounded like a bandwidth this year. It'll take a minute for your slides to me. catch up. Okay. So I'm good? You're good. You're on the wide right. Twitter slide. Okay. So Twitter is okay. Great. Twitter. I think a lot of us probably know each other from Twitter. But these are. This is why I like Twitter, and this is probably what I do the most these days. I think a lot of people on Twitter will say that they're blogging less and twittering more. And some of the people that I think are kind of fun to follow in here. And it's like going to my slide. There we go. So here's a list. If you download the slides, you'll be able to click on here and go and follow some really interesting people. Yay. OK. And these are some people I change this uh, with every presentation I do usually. Um, there are a couple teachers at the top that are listed, Mike Amante. Uh, special Care B is my friend Karen Blumberg at the School of Columbia, who is hilarious and travels all over the world, so she's fun to follow. Paula White is another Apple Distinguished Educator who's always full of resources. Uh, Teach42 is our friend Steve Dembo, who works for Discovery, and people love him and his resources. So you're going to find teachers, and you can search for them in Twitter and, and start following them. But you can also follow who they're following to get some recommendations. Um, you're also going to find thought leaders out there. I know people follow Alfie Cohn. My personal fan is um, the best way to download Ken is if you go to www.lucygray.org and you can go through the slides there right in the website where you can download the PDF and all of this stuff will be available to you. Um, Diane Ravitch is like my hero because she's you know done this 180 in her views on education and is a very vocal supporter of teachers. And she's not a spring chicken either. And um, she's taken to Twitter like, like you wouldn't believe and has really used it, I think, as a very uh, powerful platform. Um, we have Peggy George's uh, Classroom 2.0 Live feed here. Uh, we have Ed does a newsletter on education innovation. They have two newsletters. A friend of mine runs them, Betsy Corcoran. Uh, there's Ed Surge Instruct that's specifically geared towards teachers, and another one that's more towards the, the entrepreneur. Um, you know, you can get news feeds, you can get fun things from Google, like uh, search puzzles from a Google a day. But the most important thing, I think, is, is learning how to search and leverage by hashtags. So an example of this would be um, if you go to Twitter and you search for the hashtag edX, you're going to find people who are sharing apps um, related, you know, Android and iOS apps that are related to education. So there are tons and tons and tons of hashtags, and we'll talk about those in a minute. I'm also a big fan of lists in Twitter. You can make lists. You can follow other people's lists. And I have a couple lists here that may be of use to you. One is mobile learning people, people who are interested in using mobile devices in their classrooms or who have something, some connection to it. And then I have another list that's recommended, it's kind of a recommended set of getting started people. It's thought leaders, but it's also news sources and um, you know, kind of an eclectic group of people. So if you click on that link in the PDF, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second, you'll be able to see these lists. I'll, I'll bring one of these up here so you can see what it looks like. Um, and then you can see if you want to follow people on there. This is how I got started. Is, is looking for, um, you know, searching, it works to a certain, degree, certain extent to find people, but uh, if you really dig in and look at what these, these kind of list things, then it will be a little bit easier for you. 
So let me show you what my recommended list looks like. I'm going to open up the web tour and paste in a link. I will also post it here. And so you'll see a list of people that I recommend. Some are education related, some are not. It's not a popularity list. These are some kind of basic places to go to get information about technology or uh, to connect with people who are particularly generous with their ideas. Um, so there's Karen Cater, there's Aaron, Andrew Gardner from Brain Pop, um, lots of kind of eclectic people here that I think will uh, be of use to somebody who's starting out with Twitter. So that's an example of a Twitter list that I've created. It's not hard to do. Um, it, it, in some cases, it is like the quintessential place to go find out about Ed Chat. And this is Jerry, and I didn't even know what Jerry's last name was until I looked it up. Um, I just know him as Cyberary Man. <laughs> and there is a comprehensive list of, of, of search tags, basically, uh, on his website. So you can kind of see threaded discussions by people. I mentioned my friend Autumn earlier, who found other educators through Fourth Chat. And what she did was she went to Twitter, and I'll, I can bring up Twitter again. I'll show you exactly what she did. And she went to the search box up here and she typed in fourth chat. And it brought up this whole thread of conversation between fourth grade teachers. Okay? So this is a way that you can connect with other people who are uh, like-minded, who fit your niche in whatever you're doing. So it's pretty simple, it's pretty easy to do. Um, don't try to feel like you have to keep up with Twitter too much. Use it kind of uh, target in a targeted way and, it'll, and you can really get a lot out of it. Social networks. What is the big deal about social networks? Well, let me give you a little back history here. Um, Steve Hargadon started Classroom 2.0 in, I don't know, 2006, 2007, and that was the first time people could, I recall, people could build their own social network using a tool called Ning. And I built one called the Global Education Collaborative, which is now the Global Education Conference Network. And, um, and it was a space for kind of holding everything together, all the social media. It's kind of like a newspaper in some ways. And Ning was much beloved by teachers. And then um, the, it wasn't the right business model for them because teachers were getting it for free. And they changed things up a little bit. And people went bananas, if you recall. And because they were so used to using this tool and really relied on it. Um, and so you'll see at the bottom here uh, where it says alternatives to Ning, people came up with a crowdsourced list of alternatives to kind of a build your own social network for your classroom kind of tool. Uh, there are lots and lots and lots of them out there. Edmodo is one that's out there. Pearson also gives many Nings away to teachers. Um, and they've sponsored that, and you know, indefinitely, as far as I know. And you can get a mini name, which I think is up to 250 people, and you know, for seventh graders on up. So there are, are some alternatives, uh, but really, it's, I feel like a social network is kind of like your home base, and you can feed other things like videos into it and social bookmarks and that sort of thing. Um, and then, and the newest one really um, is Google Plus. Um, uh, you can build your own social network, but you can also participate in social networks. So Facebook has become my uh, kind of news feed, it, not just my personal stuff, but also my professional stuff, surprisingly, and I never thought that would happen. And Google Plus has kind of taken that to another level uh, because you can post to certain groups and, and that sort of thing as well. So social networks really are kind of your home base where everything kind of comes together. If you want to see some of these in action, um, take a look at Steve. He has teachers in one place. He also runs Future of Education, where he has his webinar series in there. There's a teacher librarian one. I love the independent school Ning um, for private school teachers, but anybody I think is welcome to join. Um, and then mine is listed here, the Global Education Conference Network, uh, which I can talk a little bit about later. But the other network is not really such a, a social network. It's, uh, that's also been pivotal in my learning has been EdTech Talk. And this started out, I think, I'm starting to think, was it Peggy? Or is it Sharon and Vicki Davis and Cheryl Oaks? And I think Peggy was there a lot. Um, uh, using EdTech Talk, which is a webcasting uh, community, 
to have a weekly kind of radio show, for lack of a better description. And it was called Women of the Web 2. And I met lots of people that are probably in this room today in those, in those chat rooms learning about different topics. And I'm not too active in ed, talk, any, ed tech talk anymore, so maybe Peggy, you can recommend some specific programs for people to see um, or to, to, not to see, to participate in. But that was and also a really early on for me a, a great way to connect with people. So social networks are also very valuable. Here are some Facebook suggestions that you might want to look at. I saw Julie Evans in here a minute ago. She runs a, a Project Tomorrow Speak Up survey. They have a Facebook page. And when you like a Facebook page, it comes up in your news feed on, on Facebook. And so you can be apprised of you know, recent goings on with all, these, with, with all these organizations. So I highly recommend you know, just about every brand or organization that you know these days has a Facebook page and probably a Google Plus page for that, mo for that matter. And it's worth looking and doing a search in Facebook to see if one exists. These are just a couple of recommendations if you want to kind of get started with this. Um, in Google Plus, uh, obviously Google has, is using Google Plus pretty uh, extensively, and they had a conference in Google Plus with their special Google Hangouts. You can do video conferencing with up to 10 people, Google Hangouts on air, where you actually record your video conference right into your YouTube channel. It's totally powerful. And they had their own conference with Google certified teachers last spring, um, all in Google on Google Plus using Google Hangouts on air. It was pretty wild. It was a little confusing exactly where you went to listen to the to the recording, um, but it was pretty cool. These are some educators and some groups that you may want to follow on Google Plus. I love Google Plus. Yes, yes, I agree. So blogging, this is one where I think this is kind of fallen by the wayside. Maybe people would, would beg to differ on it. I'm not doing it as much. I wish I was because, uh, but it, frankly, I just don't have the time to really be as thoughtful as I used to be. Um, but this is, this is where I started. This is my, my roots are in blogging. And I did it for myself more than for promoting myself and getting the word out and, and that sort of thing. It was a place where I could record what I was doing and hopefully maybe somebody would benefit from it. It really was about kind of collecting my thoughts and ideas in one place. So this is a good entry level kind of activity to do. Uh, there's still a lot of blogs that I like to read and I appreciate. Here's a variety of them. Languages. There's Sylvia Talisano's blog. Uh, always learn. Uh, she's a, a former language teacher and consultant now. Uh, lots of great iPad resources from her. Always learning is Kim Casino in Japan. She's an international school teacher. Web blogged is um, Will Richardson's blog. Never Ending Search is a uh, librarian extraordinaire, uh, Joyce Valenza. Um, and so there are other, there are, and a couple new ones that I added to this list that you might like to are Jenny McGuera, who is one of the best teachers I've ever seen. She is at the Academy for Urban School Leadership here in Chicago now. And always has great stuff and she's hilarious as well. So she's a very entertaining blogger. And then I got to meet Mike Muir from Maine this, this summer. And this is his blog which really talks about um, leadership and uh, you know thoughtful pedagogy. Uh, he has been instrumental in Maine's laptop program and now works uh, with Maine's uh, or the Auburn School District's one to one iPad deployment with kindergartners and first graders. Really, 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 really enjoyed getting to know him. And I, his blog is really thoughtful. It's a good leadership-oriented blog. Now, Flickr is something that you probably have not thought of as a professional development tool. And I want to show you a couple of really fun things with that with you. Um, not only can you put your pictures up there, but you can also add them to groups. Um, you can create stuff in big, huge labs, which is uh, the Flickr toy area. You can make silly things. Um, you can join groups that are exploring topics. Uh, you can geotag your, your photos and look at maps and that sort of thing. But I want to show you a couple of fun things. I'm going to go to my Flickr account in, uh, right now, uh, which is uh, flickr.com slash LMNS. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be logged in, so we'll see how it works. To me, I subscribe to them. This is my home page. Um, and you'll see pictures at the top from my most recent upload, which is at the I Summit conference in Atlanta. But I want to show you a couple of my uh, really uh, interesting things that you can do here. Um, 
under my favorites, I've kind of tagged a couple of things that I think are really interesting uses of Flickr. And let's see if it will let me go there or not. Come on. Not letting me do very much here. It's just letting me look at the page. Let me see if I can find a direct link for this. Um, I wonder if this is better. Is it a web tour? Isn't there another option for me in here to do something? Okay. Ugh. This stuff should be public. So if you do go there and look yourself, um, you can find it. But let me bring it up. I'll get the link, the direct link to this. A uh, couple things that I think are pretty interesting about Flickr. One, it, my favorite story is um, uh, there's a woman who's going to be keynoting for the Global Ed Conference this year named Beth Cantor. And she is, uh, she adopted a couple kids from uh, 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 Cambodia and then proceeded to do a lot of fundraising um, through social media for these orphanages that her kids came from. She just went back and had a, um, a tour of kind of a, a uh, a re uh, she went back to Cambodia and took her kids with her this time. Um, it was pretty exciting, and um, and she's become really huge for for for, for this world. So a couple years ago, this is a while ago, she uh, was doing a talk on social media t with a, a school, a prep school in the east, I believe it was. Here's the link, and she took a picture <laughs> on Flickr. And a lot of social media has a secret email address that you can post media using that email address immediately. So she took this picture with her cell phone and she sent it to her secret Flickr email address, which is in your settings, and it posted to her Flickr account immediately. And then on Twitter, she asked people to use the note-taking tool that's built into Flickr. And it was hilarious because within like a minute or two, people were uh, commenting on this picture, and these are kind of these state-looking trustees. And if you if you click over this, you're going to see little flags that will come up. Up, oh, maybe it won't do it. Um, I want coffee. I don't know if you guys can see that, or if you if you mouse over this, you know, one is says the evil eye of doom. Um, oh, it's the funniest thing I've ever seen in my entire life, and this literally happened within, I'd say, five minutes. This entire picture, let's see if I can put, I can, here's my, uh, it should be in there, um, if you want to look at it on your own. But it was really powerful to me that you could put something up and that people could comment and participate in social media immediately. Well, this is not really a great example of anything that has to do with professional development, right? But there are other ways that you can use social media and I'll show it in a little bit more constructive way and in your classroom or for yourself. One thing that I really like, particularly with this note-taking tool that's in Flickr, is that you can, um, and here's another example of what I really think is amazing. This is an example of a professor who put up their, um, a, trip, uh, a, a painting. Let's see. It should be coming up. Come on. And it's called the Marode Altarpiece, and I don't know if you guys can see it or not. And what she did was she used that note-taking tool. I don't know why it's not popping up in Blackboard Collaborate here. I'm refreshing. There we go. Okay, and so again, they used that note-taking tool and they were able to have everybody kind of analyze and comment on the painting, on the different aspects of it. And then if you scroll down, you're going to see that the students um, had a discussion about the painting in more, in more in depth. And so this is not something that's super fancy, right? But it's using the social media in kind of an interesting way uh, in your own instruction. There are also groups in here, and I'm going to give you one example of a group that I think is pretty powerful. Um, and they're also linked into that, the, the slides. And one of them is a field guide to birds. And these are people who are hobbyists, who are birders, who have certain rules in their group about how you post your pictures of birds, okay? So here, uh, this is like kind of a, a living visual guide to birds. And here, I'll put the, the link in here. 
and they have to be tagged with the correct and complete scientific name. And there's 135,000 photos in here and 14,000 numbers. So not that I am into birding particularly, but I think it's an interesting way of like crowdsourcing content and being able to learn about a topic for your own professional development in this way. And there are lots and lots and lots of other groups within Flickr that you might want to take a look at. Uh, for instance, there's classroom displays where people are sharing uh, you know, bulletin boards and that sort of thing. And I just found school library displays. And if I had been a, a brand new teacher and seeing what other people were doing to be creative in the classroom visually, this would have been really, really powerful. But of course, I went to school in like the dark ages and we didn't know about social media when I was a baby teacher. So here are some things that you might want to take a look at in terms of groups and things that may benefit your teaching. Uh, my, fa my other favorite one is atrocious apostrophes. It's people who have gone around and taken pictures of grammatically incorrect <laughs> language. And uh, I think that could be used for a classroom project in, in, in an interesting way. So these are, you know, Flickr may not be something that you thought about as professional development, but it definitely could be there. I gotta get through this really quickly, but social bookmarking has also been one of my favorite things to do. Delicious has been reinvented, um, and it's in, it's in a new incarnation from when I started. I'm not as crazy about it as I am about Digo, but Delicious has its purpose in some ways. Uh, one of the things I put in here, I put a couple people in here for you to follow, Charlene Shossis, uh Craig Nansen, and Tammy Brass, who are prolific social bookmarkers. You can always find great stuff with them. I also put in a stack from Rachel, um, uh, my Google friend Rachel, who may be in here for all I know, uh, where she did a stack of favorite videos from that uh, lovely song, You Can Call Me. And she has a whole spoof stack, and it's kind of fun. It's not really related to professional development, but I thought it was hilarious, and you guys might, might uh, enjoy it. Um, then my specialty is Vigo groups. I love Vigo because unlike Delicious, you can bookmark to a list, and you can bookmark to a group. And lists are just for you, and are kind of, you can make them public, but they're, they're basically a single user who's creating a list of favorite bookmarks. Groups allow you to bookmark collectively. So for instance, in my, it's either in my iPad one or in my um, Google one, we have like 1,200 members and 800 bookmarks or something you know, fairly substantial in there. And so you can search within these groups as well. And again, it's a, it's a vetted set of resources that are available to you anytime, anywhere. So this really, um, and, and the great thing about Digo too is that you can also, it's a, it's a, there's a lot of spammers that come into these groups. So I pretty much, I'm, I try to be as careful about letting people in as I can. But there is an education side to this as well. And you can open, you can do groups with your students where the general public isn't invited into your group and that sort of thing. So uh, keep them, you know, I appreciate tools that try to build an education side to it to make it as, as, as user friendly to our kids as well. So you might want to take a look at that. There is a setting in Digo where you can bookmark to Digo and Delicious at the same time. It's in your tools, I think, or settings. And I also have, and I can't remember what it was, anything that I tweet, any link that I tweet, also get saved to delicious. And I don't ask me how I did that. There's some Twitter tool that does that. So um, it's kind of cool. A couple things that are worth a mention in terms of expanding your professional development. I think you really need a chat client. Um, you know, I'm probably on Skype at least once a week with somebody somewhere in the country or around the world. It's become a, the norm. Um, I really like Scribed for documents, and I really like SlideShare for, for, for uploading um, slides, but also seeing what other people are doing. So I've gotten some great inspiration from looking at other people's slide decks for presentations. Organizing this all, all of this, um, at some point, you need to think about a news reader or a news aggregator. And basically, um, Google Reader is probably the one that I would go to, but there are also some iPad apps that you might want to look at. Beat, Pulse, Flipboard, they can manage a lot of content for you um, if you're using iOS devices. So these are some suggestions that you can try as you're going forward. Um, make sure you understand tags. We talked about that. Follow thought leaders. Here are a few people for you to look at um, when you download the slides. Um, there's Chris. We know Chris. We know Joyce. Lisa Parisi. These are a few suggestions. We might be in the audience for all I know. Sylvia. Um, lots of different people. You know, these are some suggestions of people to follow. 
third tip, leverage search. We talked about that particularly with Twitter. Um, you know, in Twitter, I have searches set up for things like everyday math, and so I can see what people are saying about that topic. Um, and when you're creating a, a, a using this stuff, have the same name everywhere. I'm Elementus, which means nothing. It's a silly nickname for my daughter when she was growing up. Um, but people will know you by your nickname. So either pick your real name and stick with it consistently across platforms, or pick something that's unusual that people will know you by. People know me by Elementus, but they probably don't know me by my real name. Um, and then you do want a critical mass with this stuff. Don't worry about keeping up. Just follow a lot of people on Twitter or whatever, because if you don't, you're not going to have an audience. You're not going you're gonna, you're not gonna to have a group of people to bounce ideas off of. So don't try to feel like you have to read every post or, or whatever. Jump in when you can, okay? But get lots of people involved. Finally, you know, pick one tool from all this that I've talked about that interests you that you may have not tried before. And I think there's something for everybody in the stuff that I presented. Good job, Lucy. Um, and we're going to encourage people to, to if they're going to go to the next session, to quickly Peggy shift to those rooms. George has probably been yes, in they an are online mentor to me. Waiting for um, there are lots of people out there who are willing to help you and who here. will try. And, and you just have to say, hey, how does this work? Uh, and, and this community will come running. Um, this is my information.